The best of the worst. It was on. It was on that list that you gave us, Sean, again, wasn't it? The um, the worst hundred worst films yeah, according to Rotten Tomatoes. We've decided to go with Flatliners, um, and that's the 2017 version. So this is a it's a remakey boot of the mediocre 1990s horror film, which also had a massively stacked cast. Kiefer Sutherland is back in this one, um, but who gives a shit? Because. He's not back in any real way. Um, <laughs> Elliot Page, Diego Luna, star in um, this absolutely whatever film about a terrible bunch of trainee doctors who want to die but not die in an attempt to get brain damage so that they can go to parties with the fellow students and have sex with each other and possibly unlock their true potential. Yeah. But it won't work because brain damage. <laughs> This is what I like to call a face palm of a film. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. I know we might be, we might be looking at the best, and I I, I can't do it. Thing I've, <laughs> one thing I've got is I thought the cast did okay for what they had. Shall I give you my my list of good stuff? Go on, Diego Luna. That's it. <laughs> good list. See, well, I've I've got cast like because I think Elliot Page did a fine job. Diego Luna. Fine. Oh. I want to say up top as well, I get really confused, and it happened before with Bill and Ted, um, when we're talking about people who identify as non-binary or who identify as other genders, um, and when we're talking about them in female roles, that really messes me up. So any mm. slips that we make or anything that I say she or he or they, and I've got it wrong, misgendering people, it's not intentional, and I am trying, so apologies. In some cases, it is like with me, with, I wasn't aware of Bridget Lindy Payne, so mm. I'm, I'm not going to get that right because I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so, aye. And, um, but now it is, and that's the important thing. That's it, I yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but like, I, I thought Elliot Page did a fair job. Like Diego Luna, like, I, he was the standout for me in this. I just like that he kept telling everyone, you've got brain damage. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's, what it is. Like, it's brain damage. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the question I've got is why? <laughs> it's like, what, what, what is the. Look okay, at with like Elliot Page's character. It's the same with Keith Sutherland's in the original. Uh-huh. You know, there's there's a guilt over a death that was caused. So, but Sophia, the the the, the last who plays Sophia, Sophia says that the first time that um, what's her name is it Courtney goes under Elliot Page's character. Yeah. Um, the first time she goes under, Sophia says you'll get brain damage. And she's right. Everyone got brain damage, <laughs> and everyone started hallucinating, and that's this film. That's what it was. <laughs> well, well, that's another positive I've put in, like the imagery when they hallucinate when they come out of the flat line. Ah, uh-huh. like it goes a bit sort of magical, and that, that looked good. Mm-hmm. Um, and like when when they, with the joy when they came back and how they were sort of on a high. Yeah, but yeah, apart from that, I know it's called the best of the worst. I think we've just discussed the best of the worst in five minutes. <laughs> Other than that, even that, it's it's not a good film. The thing is, as well, that it's not a, it's not the worst film though either. No. I think this suffers from that Rotten bored. Tomatoes aggregation thing of if it's below sixty percent, it gets a negative mark. So that's yeah. it. It's it's down at four percent. And if someone said to me, "Would you rate this film forty five to fifty five? Maybe yeah. there, it's a film, and there's a beginning and an ending, and there's a story, and it's a plot line and it runs from beginning to end they've made a film out of this <laughs> it was just a bit boring I, I found it hard to keep watching it not because it was like it was just there, was, there wasn't enough in it to keep me wanting to like I didn't really care no what happened to them like, I really struggled to keep yeah. focused on it like yeah because I don't know if I should have but because I've never seen the original well, I think I might have watched it once but years ago I was a kid when I watched so it I and thought, I remember the flying thing and that was it yeah so well I thought I'm going to watch it to remind myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's because I watched the original first and then the remake that I prefer the original. Right. Maybe I should have just done an experiment and watched this one first, then watched the original. Uh-huh. And obviously I don't know, but I think I would have still preferred the original. The original is it's a it's it's a lot better, but then again it's not the best film in the world. But there's something more spooky about the original. Right. I think the new one goes for more horror elements. 
Yeah. It, it tries to be horror more, but it's not. I thought that because I thought. Original, I, I don't think it's trying to be, but it is more scary. The original sort of like it was Kiefer Sutherland coming off the back of like, so was he coming off the back of Lost Boys at this point? And you've got your sort of like to Kevin Bacon, so it can be more fun. You know, you've got your Julia Roberts, Kevin Bacon, and you've got your Kiefer Sutherland. They, they, bring, they bring a certain character and a certain thing to it. I haven't seen the original one for years. I can't really remember, but yeah, I get the feeling that that might be what it is, is it? Or. Yeah, because there's a bit more. I don't know if it's biblical, but it's like there's more of a religious tone, mm-hmm. like a religious imagery. Yeah. in that one, and that that can always come across quite spooky to me. That things, didn't really that, the, like ominous music. And, yeah, because that, that was the thing I found about this one was that they tried to steer away from all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but then, consequently, you didn't have anything to hook it on. So, like, I, th- I half found myself thinking halfway through, either do a spooky film where the afterlife is a thing and you are dragging stuff back from it, or do a science-based film where you've got brain damage and you're having to deal with this, but you can't do both at the same time. They don't run concurrently. Yeah. You can buy into one world or you can buy into the other world. You can't expect me to buy into both. So if it is a spooky film and yeah. it's the afterlife and you're bringing stuff back from that, say that up top. Just go with it. One thing I will kind of... I don't know if it's necessary better, but one thing the remake does that the original one could have maybe had, like, done with, and we do talk spoilers about the best of the worst. Oh, yeah, we didn't say that up top, did we? This is all spoilers. <laughs> no, yeah, but... Yeah. It doesn't matter. Best of the worst <laughs> um, So, to me, the, the original, Keith Sutherland decides... He needs to just, he needs, instead of flatlining and come back, he needs to die as a sort of penance for causing a, a, a young boy to die when he was okay. Right. And so he goes to take his own life and they catch him in time and bring him out of it. And in the remake, Elliot Page's character, again, I couldn't, I, try, I had to rewind it and go back, but I couldn't figure out if the character dies as a result of being in sort of like this hallucination sort of effect that's come out of the film. Right. And the death sort of added a bit of sort of, like, a cost to it. There's a bit of tension, a bit of danger. Yeah, because they all come out of it. They, they all go in and come out, don't they? So there isn't really a risk to it. Yeah. Like, a, like, so they, they stay in for a bit longer. And, oh, no, they're going to die. They're not. They're fine. Everyone's all right. They just come yeah. out. But then she, she the, the character falls off a balcony. Uh-huh. And then so it does add a little bit of danger. And like, we need to sort this. Yeah. I actually uh, the, the character the character's called Courtney like she's died because of this and it's kind of like it that's this first one could have maybe done with that yeah right I wasn't looking when she fell off the balcony so 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 when <laughs> so when they were all like oh no she's dead I'm like who's dead oh and then I noticed that Courtney was the one that wasn't there I'm like all right she's dead then is she all right I didn't realize that guy was living on a boat for a while either I'm like he's on a boat that fella. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think the, the Courtney character, obviously, it sort of mirrors the Keith Sullivan character in yeah. the first one, um, where she crashes a car that kills her sister. Obviously, he's killed someone when he was a kid. Right. Is that what that joke was about them when they're all confessing stuff and they're in the table and Jamie says, what was it? He says, oh, there was this one girl. And you're like, oh, and you killed her. Like, I didn't kill her. <laughs> <laughs> because the, um, I can't remember the character's name, but I've got the actress here, uh, Nina Dubrow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, how her character is responsible for Marlow. Marlow. Yeah. Marlo. So she's responsible for a death. Mm-hmm. So I think that plays a lot in uh. both of them. But yeah, it's like, it's like what, well, no, you killed her. No, I didn't kill her. I just, just got to get a pregnant. Yeah. And I think the thing is, like, at the end, the, en- the ending, that's a valid ending for that film. If it was a different or better film, if it had earned that ending, yeah. like it just didn't seem yeah. to earn it all, did it? I do have some things under that I did listen to politics. I was being slightly glib when I said Diego Luna, but there wasn't much else. Um, the credits at the beginning, they're really shit, but it does set up the premise well. Like the the opening yeah. credits, like I thought that was good. I also thought it's not scary, so that's a good thing because I'm not really good with horror. <laughs> yeah. So it's, well, I'll put you yeah, like. Horror, and I've put a cross next to it. Suspense, I've put a line, which I think the line means me. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> when Marlow goes down to the morgue and rings Courtney's phone, it just starts ringing in a drawer, she's like, hello? <laughs> and then it's like murder and all that. It's just, it, it's not scary at all. I also wrote down when um, Courtney was putting on the head thing for the first time, it reminded me of Cerebro, and she's Kitty Price. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, is this Cerebro? <laughs> What's going on in this? 
Um, there was, a, and and also when it said, "Oh, she's been dead for two minutes. She hasn't been dead. Her heart just stopped. She's flatlined. She's not dead. You're not dead when your heart stops. You've started dying." Yeah. <laughs> but death is a process that takes a while. That's why people like pop back up and go, Oh, I'm still alive and all that. You were never dead. Yeah. You were you were you were on your way to dead. <laughs> you, were, you were getting there. But that's that's the thing that got me for this film because it's like the the students and she wants to do this. Why did she go to other students for help? Why would she not go to obviously I I guess in fully qualified doctors who have a career might yeah, want to take that's part probably in this it. <laughs> <laughs> But then, even again, for students, and again, I'm not a, a doctor or mm-hmm. a student of medicine or anything like that, so I don't know what sort of level you have to be at before you can start working in a hospital. I'm guessing <laughs> a high level. In, in in America, the way it works, they obviously the student there's learning uh-huh. hospitals. So yeah, they will they will know a fair lot about medicine. Oh yeah, I mean, I think it's like five years before you get to do a placement and stuff. So yeah, yeah. So so I know they'll, they're they're technically still students, but they'll get the gist. But for me, it was like they just happened to know a lot. I'd be okay trusting them. With my, with my diagnosis, but then maybe not with the way they play fast and lose for fun. I, mean. I don't mean I do. I do know, like, sort of from anecdotally from people in medical professions that some stuff does go on. Maybe not to this extent when you when you're learning, but you know, maybe experimenting <laughs> yeah. with the odd the odd thing that you play with. Um, what else was I thinking of as well? There was um oh that really dumbass car chase scene. How the hell did that play out? Right, I totally forgot about that when you said that. That's how much <laughs> it's, it's, a, it, it's, in a, it's from a different film because they changed the camera and everything like that, don't they? Like it seems that they're all in a mini and they're all crammed into that mini and like they're just like whoa, yeah. whoa! <laughs> it's just stupid. And they're all like. Esca- they're escaping nothing. I think the cleaning team's coming in, and Sophia wants to do her flatline there and then. So they go down and do it, and then yeah. like they get caught. But they're just running away from security. There's no way to continue that chase scene into the streets, because no one's chasing them. The security guards were on foot. <laughs> yeah. The security guards were on foot. And again, it doesn't matter who chase scenes or chase scenes, but it obviously it just happened to be that character's car. But I just remember thinking... That's not a good looking car for it. It isn't. A I think it's a different car. car. I know that just. I need to watch it again, car. and I'm not going to watch it again. <laughs> but I think I think they put everyone into a different car than they drive out on the street in. Because I think it's a mini that they're out on the street in. But there's a weird sort yeah. of door opening system going on that I don't recognise. Yeah, it's a dumbass film. It's dumbass. The Rubik's Cube bit as well. Remember that when Sophia's like everyone's got these superpowers and she's just sort of messing about with the Rubik's Cube for a bit and they like speed up a hand or it's not her hands or they do something <laughs> I, I must have just blanked out for a bit I don't remember that <laughs> that's how much this film held my attention I know I should be a bit more professional and try to have an oh man that's, like, I wanted to like I wanted to like this film yeah. I like the premise it's an interesting sort of premise and I think it's one thing I want to know is how did it get made the, the original film right cost 26 million and it made 61 million back so that's a return it's not great it's yes. but it's 2.35 the times the budget this one they made it cheaper than the original this one cost 90 million to make and it made 45 million which is 2.26 times the budget it's almost exactly the same return as the original film so someone's just gone you know what do you want to do what does anybody want to make a little bit of money and I know, like, if I look, if I spent twenty six million on something and someone give me sixty one million back, I'd probably be quite happy. But in Hollywood yeah. terms, in Hollywood terms, that hasn't really made any money because you're at yeah. thirty to thirty five million after your marketing, and then cinemas keep some of that. So you've probably made about two three million. Yeah, yeah, ten percent of the ticket prices. If someone said, "Do you want to make like three or four million dollars?" I'd probably say yes. <laughs> So, so that's what they've done yeah. here. The for, for me or you, that's that's a good day at work. But for Hollywood, it's like, yeah, you can have better days. <laughs> it's a Hollywood company, but I... yeah. Another thing I noted down about this is that I didn't go and see this at the cinema, and this was back in the days when I would have gone to see everything at the cinema. I would go and see four and five films a day. Back in the day when we were allowed to, go yeah. To the cinema. <laughs> so I thought it was really odd that I didn't go and see it because I was intrigued by it because the cast's good. I remember seeing a bit of the original and thinking it was cool but i was a child so who knows so i went back and thought i think what was out at the same time that i would have gone to see in that day when i didn't see this so this would have made it this the fifth film in that day i went to see kingsman american made blade runner 2049 
and Thor Ragnarok. I regret nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we the right choice. <laughs> I mean, out of those ones, I've never, I've not seen American Made, but I've seen the rest. So yeah, you you, you did right. <laughs> yeah, American Made is 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 actually all right. I would put it, well, I would put it fourth in those four films, but it's a good rake of films. Those four films, <laughs> and then I would put Flatliners way down behind that. Well, obviously, I, I, I thought the the mistake I made was watching the original before this one. Right. Come to think of it, the biggest mistake I watched, um, I made was watching them back to back. So that's what I literally did. Oh, oh, oh. I watched them back to back. Oh. Um, so I, I think I maybe should have went into the new one with a just a clean slate. Maybe a different day, or maybe watched it first. <laughs> but I don't think it would have really had an effect. It doesn't really make thought. much of a difference, to be honest, Sean. I went into the, well, I went into this after having watched Snowpiercer, all the episodes, but yeah. still. Well, I watched the, the two Snowpiercer episodes after this. Yeah, I had a, there was a big day watching that day. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, this is this is no speed two at all, is it? This is uh, oh, I the, think in, I, I remember like, last time we were talking about speed two, we gave the I can't remember the actor's name, but the guy from Friends. Oh was, yeah, uh, Mike Haggerty. Uh, Mike Haggerty. I don't know if we can award one to this. Oh, what gets the What gets the Oscar for this film? Um, or should we just call it the waffle? <laughs> what gets the oh, waffle? <laughs> um, I had I had one. I reckon. Diego Luna not being able to take off a woman's top should get it in this one. <laughs> His inability to lift up a top from the bottom when he's when he's about to have sex with Marlo is unbelievable. He starts faffing around with buttons that aren't even there. <laughs> I'm gone. That's true. I was like, what are you up to, mate? This is just frustrating. You know, like, sex scenes vary throughout films, but I was like, fuck me, mate, this is... <laughs> just get on with it. <laughs> you look like Diego Luna. You've clearly had sex with somebody before. <laughs> you look how you look. Hi, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just that just didn't really track for me that bit. Um, the other thing was as well that I, that I found absolutely bonkers was like they come out of this thing and this gets abandoned later on in the film. By the way, as well, this premise that they're all on one wavelength. When um, Courtney and yeah. Jamie they do theirs, and then they like they come out of this party and they're like, Whoa, "Hey, let's go!" And then they just smash through that wall. They start sort of like grinding about a bit together, and they just go in the street and they are they chucking rain at each other and they're fucking around in traffic. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" And everyone else is standing back, going, "Wow, look at them! It's like they're on the same wavelength." And I'm like, "They look fucking hammered. That's all that is." <laughs> They look smashed. <laughs> ah, yeah, they just look fucking mental, and they look like students out on the street. <laughs> and then they go to that party, and they're like, "Oh, wavelength. I don't want to be on that." Great party! Like it wasn't a great party; it was just a party. <laughs> 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 fucking it! And that whole thing about them being on one wavelength just gets abandoned after those two. Like that doesn't come come in throughout the rest yeah. of the film. There's loads of just things that just dropped. It's like, Fucking time wasting bastards here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well done. What his name was the, the Danish fellow that made this? Yeah. You made a film, didn't you? Oh, I've got the director's name. <laughs> Niels Arden Ockler. That's him. I think I've yeah. read that. Yeah. Yeah. It's big, I, I've, I've made a couple of short films. I, I get how difficult they can be. I've made a couple of sex films. That's it. <laughs> Just me and him. But, um, <laughs> I'll put them on the Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if I could even make a film of this like size. No, you know, get on you. It's not an easy job. No. But yeah, it's no, it's not my cup of tea. I'm afraid. No. If you enjoyed this one, you may be interested to know that this was just a small part of a larger waffle that we do every two weeks. You'll be able to find that wherever you found this one, hopefully. Uh, you'll also be able to follow us on all of our social media platforms linked below. And if you want to get in touch with us, please feel free to do so anytime you like. You can reach out on social media or you can email us at w.a.f.f.l.e.p.o.d at gmail.com. <laughs>